Okay, so smart water meter technology, it's been around for a, a fair while. And um, I mean, I might be being a bit harsh, but it seems to me to have been implemented somewhat sporadically by water companies, although in areas where there's been you know, drought affected areas, you know, I think people like Anglin have you know, implemented on a much more sort of wider range and even compulsory basis. But um, I'm just wondering whether it is looking as if that's going to change and a more sort of concerted attempt to, to introduce smart water metering across the industry. Is is that a, a likely sort of occurrence over the next couple of, well, next few years, should we say? Yeah, I think so. Um, the I mean, the whole reason behind smart metering uh, initially was uh, to help those water companies, particularly in distressed water areas, which are sort of south, southeast of England. Um, and what we've seen as you know over the last few years is uh, more extensive um, sort of droughts and uh, hose pipe bans last year. Um, and I think that's that's really led to the water companies um, having to respond to off what's uh, methodology over the last sort of 12 months or so um, around encouraging the adoption of a smart metering more generally and broadly. Um, and it's really encouraging that uh, off what's uh, published methodology for PR24 is supporting uh, real time connected smart metering um, for the next time period from 2025 to 2030. Um, and I think in combination with that, we've seen um, some really good uh, ambition from the water companies in the um, water resource management plans as well that were published last December. So I think overall, this will help um, the, with the rollout of smart metering across uh, the whole of, sort of England and Wales. Um, and, and I think finally, the part is the other part is that there's a real necessary um, element to this around raising the consciousness of the importance of water um, as a valuable uh, and essential commodity to us all as we go forwards um, with the consumer population in the UK. Yeah, and I mean, with the cost of living crisis, we've seen how you know, the stories about energy meters, smart meters, and people are you know, watching what they're doing and literally changing their behavior as a result. Um, and I'm, I'm guessing part of the advantage of smart water meters is a similar thing because um, although obviously if you don't have one, you, you, you have a standard charge, but once you go into a smart water meter, you'll be charged for usage and therefore customers have an opportunity to see how, when you know, they're using water and change their you know, habits accordingly to, to sort of make sure their bills are, are you know, manageable or at least you know, not as high as they, they could be. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I think uh, the slight difference here is that you've always had meters in the energy world um, yeah, they weren't necessarily all smart, but um, they will see there's a smart rollout program now for, for energy meters and everyone's very conscious about that, of course, with the price of energy at the moment. Um, but uh, smart metering within water, in fact, metering in general in water has been somewhat behind. Only about 55 percent of England and Wales currently have meters for, for water. Um, so at the moment, um, yeah, a lot of uh, properties actually are charged on a sort of rateable basis uh, as opposed to the actual water um, that they might actually consume. Um, there's a whole debate about whether that's that's right and proper, of course, probably uh, outside of my um, scope. It's more of a political conversation, I think, on that one. But um, the important thing about smart metering is that it puts power to the consumer ultimately to um, to know what it is that they're actually using. And therefore, once you know what you're using, because most people don't have really much idea at all of, of how much water they actually use or what is reasonable, what is a good level of water to use. If you can provide that data through smart meters to people, then at least they can start taking some steps to reduce their usage. And of course, you're going to get an accurate bill because you're actually um, you've been charged for exactly what you use. Um, it could well be that uh, you know, your bill will go down. Um, for example, if you're in a house that has you know, four bedrooms and yet there's only two people in it, the chances are um, the, uh, the water metered uh, billing charge will be lower. Than a rateable charge. So, um, and, and there's a debate about whether you even need to charge on a usage basis if you put water meters in. There's all sorts of additional benefits to the water company overall um, that would um, potentially mean you don't need to necessarily bill the customer for the usage that they um, consume anyway. Yeah, I'm getting, so I, I guess it works both ways. Obviously, for the customer, it gives visibility and, and they can see what they're using and manage, manage that usage. And for the water companies, it's a good opportunity to. I guess in, just engage with customers more around their usage and maybe help them, you know, understand. Give them. I, I know already the water companies do obviously put out water conservation advice, but uh, to your point earlier, it, it's for whatever reason it's perhaps not you know, gained as much traction as it should. Whereas with a water meter, there's a very direct link that they can then 
persuade com- you know customers to change or you know whether it's given financial incentives etc to you know change mm. behavior yeah exactly that i mean i i personally have uh, very little idea about the the amount of water i use for specific things um i don't know how much water i use for example in a shower i don't know how much water might be used by my loo every day or you know for for washing up or, or whatever those things are um, and if you look at again at energy smart metering you're starting to get that information now from your energy company about the uh, highest forms of usage um, that you might have consumed over the last week or two weeks and the same can be applied in the water space um, once you've spent a bit of time generating all of the data and it's critical that data has to be frequent and near real time um, then you can start deriving insights from that about how people are actually using their water so how much water are they using in their showers and so on and and therefore, you can start identifying reasons to engage with consumers and users about suggesting how they might think about reducing their overall consumption and where, in fact, they might be wasting it. So um, meters can, in summary, they can deliver a much better customer experience. But as, as to the point you just made there, in terms of the, the critical aspect is the data and you know, the old saying garbage in garbage out whatever it's important that you get the quality of data and, and in you know, in many cases real i guess there's real time and then you know longer term analytics going on but um quality of data is is paramount otherwise you, it's yeah kind of a self de- well self-defeating uh, process is that right yeah that's spot on i mean i think um if, if you look at the uh sort of old dumb meters if you like which might have been read every three or six months or so there's very little opportunity to derive any information from that. So all you can tell is literally how much water was used over that three month or six month period. But there's no opportunity to look at, well, how was it used? And, and obviously even less opportunity to, to look at, well, how could you potentially look at saving um, water in certain areas? So the, the idea of smart metering, this is a fundamental uh, point really, which is it's about the sort of connected um, uh, meter that is constantly communicating data on a frequent basis, typically every hour. And that gives you the opportunity to run some uh, AI and type of, uh, drive some insights from that that can identify those opportunities. And, and of course, it's it's a great tool in diagnosing where there may well be leakage as well. Yeah, I was gonna say again, there's a sort of two way thing. So for the customer uh, visibility on that side, but also for the water company on the supply side, as you say, it can, it can point out problems in the system and whether it's leakage. I, I mean, we had something the other other week they came around the garden they're still using the old listening sticks and all that which i'm sure they work so it's great but um you say there are smart water meters can also contribute to that you know finding finding leaks which again the water companies uh, seem to rightly or wrongly get hammered for you know when it comes to this sort of political issue everyone's saying how, how can they you know lose all this water so they've got a chance to do something uh, exactly. I mean, and look, a lot of the water companies have got a, a very large legacy to deal with, um, and uh, that creates a lot of leakage, unfortunately, in the network. We, we see about three billion litres of water, unfortunately, is, is uh, you know, lost every, every um, uh, day uh, from, through leakage on the supply side. Um, and uh, there's an opportunity, obviously, to reduce that. In fact, the water companies have been doing a reasonably good job, actually, of, of reducing leakage overall, and they remain very focused on, on uh, bringing the leakage down. Um, and we all have a part to play on this because a lot of leakage is actually on the consumer side. So you wouldn't necessarily be aware of that unless you've got a smart meter installed, which is looking at the flow rate, you know, potentially every hour. And if your flow rate never comes down to zero, say over a period of a couple of weeks on an hourly basis, it generally means that there's a leak, you know, water is constantly flowing through. And if that's the case, um, there's a great opportunity for the water company to engage with the consumer where they spot a leak proactively. And there's a responsibility on the consumer to work with the water company to try and eradicate that. Um, For example, uh, you know, a leaking loo, which is quite a common uh, aspect because the water just leaks into the pan of the loo now, might well lose 120,000 litres of water a year, which is obviously considerable. And if you have several loos in your house, for example, that could double or triple easily. Um, There's a responsibility for everyone to to raise this consciousness of the importance of water and start reducing the wastage of it. And more strategically, I mean, there have been stories in the press and and in the UK and mainland Europe about sort of an ongoing drought situation. And if we don't get lots of rainfall between now and the summer, goodness only knows what's going to happen so smart water meters 
as part of that more strategic sort of it used to be called demand management i don't know if that's they've been replaced by something else but um so they have a, a, a huge role. I know it's a more difficult area, and as you mentioned earlier, it's a bit political, but um, there is the opportunity anyway to use smart meters as part of a, a water conservation strategy, you know, whether it's the water companies doing it or you know, government sort of imposes it. Yeah, just your thoughts on that. Yeah, I mean, I think um, it's it's now uh, sort of becoming more broadly aware that we have a water scarcity problem. Um, there's a number of dates that are put out there, 2050 being one of those where um, growing population, climate change, you know, affecting the availability of water and the amount that we need. Um, we may well have a water deficit um, in the not too distant future. But I mean, we only have to look back at last summer. We had host bike bans in you know, many places in England and Wales, and that is the beginning effectively of a water shortage. Um, so that is a symptom. Um, we've also had three very dry winters in a row and February this year, in fact, has been extremely dry as you probably saw in the news recently. So this is an increasing problem. Um, and we therefore need to do one of three things. We either got to create more water on the supply side, that typically is expensive or it's damaging to the environment to abstract water or store more in reservoirs. We've got to drive down consumption, which we've just talked about around how we engage with consumers and make them aware of the water they use and opportunities to save it. Or we've got to eradicate that leakage, you know, in the middle. So more efficient uh, way of transporting water between the supply and to the consumer or end user. So those are the critical things. Um, but in order to achieve that, all parties really need to engage um, in a in a multiple uh, multitude of different ways in order to tackle that problem. And do you think this is, I, again? I know it's politically sensitive, but is there the potential opportunity to give people a fixed amount? You know, again, depending on the number of people in their household, etc. So you mentioned hosepipe bans, but if somebody, as you say, hardly uses any water, but they're a keen gardener and they want to water there, but you know, if there's a blanket hosepipe ban. Um, they're impacted perhaps unfairly because they you know, there aren't six of them in the house having bars, shares, washing machines and all the rest of it. So is there a way of sort of being as democratic as possible? And it sounds a bit pompous, sorry, but, you know, just evening out the the impact on everyone that as fairly as possible by, by using smart water meters. Yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, hose pipe bans are typically the symptom we all see, aren't they, of um, kind of water shortage, I suppose. And, and the reason for that is, is actually really clear. And again, something people probably don't appreciate that just using your hose pipe for an hour uh, in the summer when water is perhaps more scarce as well is the equivalent of a family of four using almost two days worth of water in its entirety. Um, so there's a lot of different ways, I think. I mean, water, uh, the bottom line is though, without smart water metering, you'd have no ability to measure you know, how people are consuming water. You might want to reward somebody by perhaps using a hose pipe if they've managed to save water in many other areas where you've suggested it. But none of that's possible unless you've got the data in the first place and you're measuring it, uh, measuring it accurately. Um, and I think, you know, we're just starting to see that again, referring back to the energy space where People are being incentivized to start thinking about how they use their electricity between sort of uh, five and seven in the evening, particularly and rewarded for doing so. There's no reason why you can't, again, with the data produced from smart metering, start to introduce those types of incentives um, so it becomes fair to all. But um, as you say, uh, if they're very conscious about water consumption elsewhere, why not be rewarded being able to use your hose pipe, perhaps? And do you think, I mean, we, uh, we've used the energy industry for you know, comparison. So clearly the, the, the rush, you know, Russia's invasion of Ukraine and the, the subsequent sort of energy crisis, if you like, as really focused minds, do you, I mean, not that we would wish it, but do you think there's almost a, a need for a similar sort of water scarcity related event, you know, whether it's this summer, as you say, if, if we don't get rainfall and there literally are, you know, the taps run dry or whatever it is that will, because at the moment, we're all vaguely aware about it, but nobody really does anything about it because when you turn the tap on or whatever, it's still capping. Do we need some kind of massive event and we all go, OK, right, you know, I get it. We've got to change our behaviour. I think something has to change. Um, I, you're right. At the end of the day, I think the assumption here is that it rains a lot, um, you know, in this country. And and it because that has been the case, um, certainly in the past, I think climate change is affecting that. It isn't in our consciousness to, to be particularly concerned around water shortage. And I certainly remember there was in the uh, 70s. I'm old enough, unfortunately, to, to remember that with standpipes and so on. But 
since that time, we really haven't had anything like that. We may have had the inconvenience of some hose pipe bans and so on. But I think um, there is certainly a, a um, whole period of um, awareness raising that needs to go on about the challenges faced around water security for the future. Um, but it all starts with measurement. If you can't, I mean, if you're not measuring what's happening, then there's really very little opportunity to do anything about it. And that has to happen both at consumer level, and it has to happen both at water company level and at national level too. Yeah, and, and you mentioned it earlier, but the water companies do have a, a sort of major opportunity off what's PR24 metering imperative gives them the opportunity to do something significant in this space. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, very much so. I mean, this, this I think this is a really critical period. Um, if we, as you know, the water company invests in five year cycles, um, typically smart water metering, those programs last for 15 years and the asset to, uh, asset life of the meters is typically 15 years. Um, so it's, it, this is a critical period. If we don't get it uh, right, I think for PR24 and uh, the next sort of five year investment period, then there will have been a missed opportunity. Um, so we then be looking out at 2030 and beyond. And I think we need to act before then. Um, that seems to be the general consensus and that's supported, I think, very much by off what uh, and its approach this time round in uh, PR24. And the, the sensitive issue, I guess, is, is you know, getting customers to willingly volunteer for smart water meters because um, they are, will naturally be suspicious of the idea that their bills, you know, in certain cases, will go up rather than down. Such, um, so, do you think that government is needed to, you know, to sort of explain and persuade, or, or you know, ultimately legislate? Because the water companies, again, you know, it's all political, isn't it? Because the water companies are seen to make large amounts of money, although clearly they have huge amounts of debt as well, and and consumers are, are, are perhaps, you know, not wanting to help them particularly. So, how, how do you persuade everyone to, to, to the customers that you know smart water meters are actually a good idea as opposed to something that'll cost them some money yeah i mean i, th I think you're right i think there is probably a there's a policy uh, level to this um certainly uh, one one part um i mean there's for, for example we know because through research that we've done in the past that there is actually a business case that supports the adoption of smart meters uh, across the country without even um, applying it to uh, usage billing to, to consumers, i.e. Um, you could put it in and the benefit is actually through reducing the leakage um, of, uh, and the identification of leakage, you, you could remove that and that uh, costs in itself. Um, so whether you want to onward charge uh, for usage to consumers, again, could be a, a more uh, policy driven decision from, from government and off what. Um, but I think there's also a number of other dimensions. Uh, I think we're all more conscious these days about our impact on our environment. And I think, you know, people need to have an awareness of what the impact of um, abstracting water is, particularly on our water courses, our chalk streams, our rivers and so on. And I think if people were aware of that, um, then perhaps they would be more consciously bothered about you know, the water that they consume and how they treat it. So I think there are a number of different angles to this. And in terms of the water companies, I mean, even if they're getting, you know, obviously valuable data from the smart water meters they've installed, it, it's potentially very difficult for them to predict, you know, if they in, implement smart water meter programs, you know, whole scale across the, you know, the, the whole regions, et cetera, you know, to go from rateable charges as they are now. So they know basically, you know, on January the 1st, more or less how much income they're going to get therefore can plan accordingly. With smart water meters, that certainty sort of disappears for at least a while until they work. Um, so is that a potential, is that why water companies themselves may be a bit reluctant because it causes them a bit of a financial headache until they understand everybody's behavior? Yeah, I mean, I think there's, there's two things really here. The first is um, if there's a customer that has a dumb water meter at the moment, then the water company will at least know how much water they're consuming over a sort of broader period of time. So. They could probably make an assessment, I suspect, of what the um, uh, effect would be on bills if they went to a usage basis uh, on smart meters. Um, but if there's no water meter currently present, um, it would be done pretty much on a sort of modeling type of basis, but wouldn't be entirely accurate for sure. Um, I think that, um, again, it goes back to the previous point of there, again, could be a policy driven type of approach to this where a smart water meter could be installed. You stay on the same 
uh, billing rate as, as you were previously until there's data available to model exactly and accurately uh, what the charge could well be. So I think it kind of falls into some of my previous uh, commentary around you know, it could be a policy led decision on this uh, and not just automatically you apply a usage basis uh, when you put a smart meter in. And, and in many cases, you want to remember, um, actually putting in a smart meter will reduce your bill. Um, so it isn't automatic. It's going to go up far from it. And in terms of the, the way forward here, um, it, often, sorry, not just with issues, but with so many across the water industry that um, we're, individual groups have you know, individual sort of motives and ideas, but it needs them all to be brought together, you know, to work out the best way forward. Um, do you think there's any danger that we're going to get sort of all the stakeholders together and, and, and workers? Because for as long as it's all a bit piecemeal, you know, the ward companies will say will get blamed by, you know, the public just because they're seen as you know the, the media sort of driven fat cats and all the rest of it uh, the environment agency potentially hasn't quite got enough resources or certainly not as many as it once had to do we just need a bit more of a coherent approach as opposed to letting everyone kind of do their own thing and, and hoping it all works yeah like, i do think that um i think the smart metering program it enables an awful lot of other conversations and opportunities. That's ultimately what it is about. Um, yeah, exactly how that's all fully implemented um, is, can still be determined. Um, I do think that um, it will lead to a much stronger customer engagement um, between water company and consumer and, and really help educate you know, people just about the preciousness of water, um, what their impact is in consuming that water, what the impact they have on the environment, um, there's uh, carbon output that's uh, as a result of you know, water treatment, um, there's effect to our rivers and, uh, and our environment very much. So I think it would be naive that we don't all um, understand we've got a role to play. Um, and that includes obviously you know, the government, the regulators, um, the water companies, but us as consumers as well. Um, we have a part, a part to play in this, so we are all in it together, I think. Um, however, it does need a concerted effort, I think, to bring that all together. And um, I think there are plenty of organisations out there that are trying very much to raise the awareness of uh, you know, the impact that we have um, and what we can do about it. And maybe just in, in finishing your own organisation, it'd be good to understand sort of what your involvement has been thus far and, and what you are anticipating or hoping you know, might be coming down the line, whether it's you know, the PR24 or whatever, you know, what you see as the future. Yeah, so our Kiva, um, we provide the smart metering uh, connectivity uh, effectively to um, allow the data to pass from the meters uh, through to um, the water providers themselves. Um, so very much our interest is to support the water companies uh, roll out of smart metering, the adoption of that and enable that um, better customer interaction. And I think uh, also the, the key thing for us is to identify leakage, <clears throat> excuse me, um, yeah, there is a lot of uh, water that is leaked, as we said, throughout the network. Um, and if you're connected real time uh, with data, it gives you an instant opportunity to identify leaks, prioritise your field force to go out uh, and address those leaks or engage with the consumer perhaps the following morning if a leak is spotted and therefore you know, reduce the amount of water that is wasted up front. So we're very much um, in support of, I think, of what's ambition around driving the adoption of smart metering and uh, and obviously there to support the water companies uh, in their rollout plans to meet that ambition level. Okay, well, it's been lovely to chat to you, Peter. So appreciate you giving, giving me the time. So thanks very much indeed. Thank you.